it is said that a good shepherd always lead his flock into green, green pastures. And our pastor has been a very, very good shepherd. And to bring his message this morning, his encouragement, as he called it, I now ask our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to speak to us this morning. Oh, thank you, Vance. That's wonderful. Good morning, worldwide spiritual family. Happy New Year. Happy New You. Happy New Now. Because that is the only time we really have. Let us be happy and celebrate in the now. So can I hear you just say, Happy New Now. Happy New Now. Say with me, Behold, I make all things new in 2022. Together. Behold, I make all things new in 2022. And then I like to take the energy, so let's say it in a half voice. Behold, I make all things new in 2022. And in a whisper, Behold, I make all things new in 2022. And now say it in your heart. Wonderful. You feel the shifting energy as you go from load into just going within. And here's another one for you. I am a new awareness of me having a new now in a new year. Let me say it again. I am a new awareness of me having a new now in a new year. Together. I am a new awareness of me having a new now in a new year. And wow, I just, I just think it's amazing. With the turn of the calendar, you go from December 31st in one year. Ta-da! It's a brand new year. And stretch before you 12 months of adventure. 12 months that beg, just are waiting for you to write a new script. To place in the universe your declaration of what you expect, deserve, and desire in a new year. And so that, that promise in Revelation 21, verse 5, really echoes through the centuries to me. Behold, I make all things new. All things. Even the good things need to be renewed and revamped and reloved and redesigned and reshaped, remodeled, so that they fit the new paradigm. And so when we sang this morning, I shall start anew this morning with a higher, fairer creed. That is our divine dharma. We need to start anew in each new now to create that which we want to see in a world that truly deserves better than we have had today. Don't you believe? And you know, friends, there is much of our lives that will continue without interruption during this new year. Because many of us have fixed patterns of behavior and beliefs and paradigms. I thought about it myself when I was writing this. I drive the same way to church and to work every single day. Now, there are several routes I could take, but I'm a creature of habit. Try a new route now. Just to see a different view. To get there, the, same, the destination is the same, but you want to get there in a different kind of way. And so one of the things I want you to try is try doing some things. You know, we are creatures of habit. Did you know that you put on your trousers, those of you that wear trousers, with the same foot every day. Every time you're stepping into your trousers, you put the same leg in. Tomorrow morning, try the other leg. You can't balance, you can't stand up. Because we are creatures of habit. 
look around and there are, you will notice that, that people sit in the same seat on a Sunday. Nothing is wrong with that. But we, we have habits that are deeply ingrained. And one of the things I want us to, to do in this new year is to start taking some new routes to get where we want to go. Just to experience the newness. If you walk in the morning, take a different route. If you're driving to work, drive a different route. For friends, when you do, you find that we are all greater than we think we are and that we are capable of taking many different paths to arrive at our destination. And this year, my friends, we are called to be new in the now, in this moment. If we can start anew this moment with a higher, fairer creed, a creed that says that I am here to help to create a world that really works for everyone. Well, the world works for everyone already, you know, because it works at our level of consciousness. If we believe the world is a, a rough place and it's hard to live in, that's our experience. So the world works for us according to our belief. So when we say we want to help create a world that works for everyone, what we really are saying is that we want to create a consciousness in people, to help people to create a consciousness of the better that is theirs by divine right of being. Because we are greater than we think we are. And we need to wake up to a new understanding of the majesty of our being and the glory of our spiritual mag magnificence. Too many people are walking around feeling not enough. And boy, when you know, if you knew where I came from, you would, you would, you would, you would understand. I truly don't know, yeah? But things rough. Can we change that mental set? Can we as a spiritual community help to model a new behavior which says to people, you are worthy. You are valid, valuable, and authentic as a member of the human race. And we have a welcome for you in a place called the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, where you will find the teaching of truth undisturbed by dogma and shoulds and shouldas and woulds and wouldas you will find an acceptance at this place called the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living where you can explore new pathways up the mountain to your relationship with God. And my friends, I want you to know that the central spiritual fact of your life, just, just, just know this for me, with me today, that the central spiritual fact of your life is your relationship to God. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. I don't care what other plans you have. The central issue is how you relate to the infinite invisible. That thing, that essence, that, that presence, that power, that energy that spake you into being, that said, let there be you, and you came forth as a creation of something that is amazing in its power, in its majesty, in its might, in its ability to walk you through every experience in the landscape of your life this year. A friend of mine has taken up landscape gardening and looking after gardens, and you know, every garden is different. Some people have pots of flowering stuff. Some people have green thumbs. My friend Carmen Clark, she can grow anything. I think she grows stones into, into <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. For me, I can grow things, but orchids don't do well for me. So, the landscape of our life calls for us to do some gardening. It calls for us to put perhaps some new potting soil down this, this, this new year, to, to replenish the topsoil, to do some new planting. And my question for you on this second 
day of January 2022 is what is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? Is your relationship to God important and real in your life? Is it dear to you? Is it something precious? You know, you, ha you have friends and their friendship uh, is just beyond measure, beyond treasure. It it's precious. Do you have that same feeling about your walk with God? Because, my friends, if you can answer those questions, you will know that they carry tremendous power to landscape your life this year and to create experiences that are abloom with the glory of Almighty God in your life and in your affairs. This morning, Michaela from our youth group read the poem titled, The Gate of the Year, which tradition says so appealed to King George VI of England that his daughter, the then Princess Elizabeth, now Her Majesty the Queen of England, she had it inscribed on the gates of his tomb. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may safely tread into the unknown. We all want that light, don't we? We want to know where we are going. And the psalmist says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Do you know that in, in ancient times, they actually strapped a little lamp, a little oil lamp to their ankle so that all you could see as you went through the desert or along the, the dusty streets the was the next step. And you could say to God, all I am asking is for the light in this year to see the next step along my pathway to glory. I don't need to see the whole year. I need to see the new now. How am I relating to God, my creator, my source, my substance, my paymaster? It's not your job. God is the paymaster. How am I relating to this, this essence and this energy now? Is what I am saying, is who I am being, is what am I doing in this moment, glorifying the creator of my life and my substance. And so I want you to make a commitment, my, my friends, today to work on your personal, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual growth, your relationship in 2022 to God. And you know, that if there are areas of, that you need healing in, your first assignment in preparation for our New Year's workshop tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock is to look, take a little quiet time today, maybe after the rice and peas and chicken. Spend a little time by yourself. Ask the family just to give you an hour of me time. And look at what habits you have that maybe, just maybe, are not working for you any longer. What habits, what habitual ways of being, of speaking, of thinking, and of acting no longer serve you? Where are you stuck in patterns that are no longer of service to you and that may be blocking your progress? And make a note of those for yourself today. Without judgment, just lovingly, where am I stuck? Where do I want to make a difference? And then perhaps tomorrow morning you will symbolically take a new route and say, hey, I've started to make a shift. I'm going to drive a different way to work this morning. I'm going to put on my foot in the right leg of my trousers instead of the left. I'm making a start. Just in simple ways, you know, in small, small ways, you can make that shift 
that paradigm shift, which is so powerful. You'll be amazed to know the difference it can make. And so that is your first assignment, should you decide to, uh, decide to undertake it. Just review your life and look at where you have patterns that no longer serve you. I'm going to give you the big, the big frog to swallow, which is the second part of your assignment. My friends, the biggest block, we don't know how to say it except for say it. The biggest block to your closer walk with God. The biggest block to your relationship with the Almighty is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness and resentment clog the conduit that allows the free flow of God's substance to you, into your life and affairs, and from you out into the world to bless it and to make it a place that works for all. And you know, for years when I came to the New Year's workshop and Reverend Elmer Lumsden, our founding minister, gave this exercise, every year I forgive somebody. The same somebody, you know. <laughs> every year I forgive them. And one year, it was the first year that I had to conduct the workshop myself. I said to myself, as we say in Jamaica, I've been doing it wrong. Rotted. It's me that need the forgiveness. All these years I've been thinking it's the person that offended me that needed the forgiveness. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, not my sister, not my brother, me. You know why? I needed to forgive myself for allowing myself to be hurt by someone who is my brother or my sister. So the second part of your assignment is to look at where you need to forgive yourself so that you can begin anew to make all things right in 2022. And so just look in addition to where your patterns, your stuck patterns are keeping you from progressing. Look at where it is that you need to forgive you. You know, it's amazing, but Jesus the Master Show, he actually said, if you, if you have ought against anyone, and that includes yourself, leave your gift at the altar. Don't want to give them no Christmas present or no birthday present. Leave it and go and be reconciled with that person. That is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself in this new year. You know, Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind, the textbook, and I want to quote him, the mind which condemns understands not the truth of being, and the heart which would shut the door of its bosom to one who is mistaken strangles, strangles its own life. So if you have made a mistake and you have shut the door on yourself, you're strangling your own ability to move forward in greatness and in grace and in love and in joy into a new now. And you know, it might sound hard because sometimes we carry the burden of guilt. And guilt is the opposite of unforgiveness, you know. Guilt is the cry of a soul that requires forgiveness but hasn't received it. And so we need to do some forgiveness work. If there are people out there that, that have offended you, forgive them. But most of all, forgive yourself. Because it will just clear the, the block, straighten out the kink in the hole so that the universal substance can flow unimpeded into your life in this new way. And there's no way to escape the effects of this law, my friends. We have to consciously align ourselves with the higher cause of love 
in order to be able to move forward. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting, but the, for, for most of us, the first thing that occurs to us is you don't know what the person did me. It's hard to let it go. I was doing a workshop um, uh, talking about the matter of forgiveness in a conflict management workshop years and years ago. I wasn't yet a minister, but I was coming to this church. And there was a woman in the workshop who, she remained silent for the entire day. And just before closing time, she just erupted unexpectedly. I mean, the whole group of us were, we were in shock because she hadn't said a word. Very quiet soul. She said, you can talk about forgiveness all you want, but it's because nobody ever do you what my brother do me. And it was said with such passion that I assumed that it had happened recently in her life. So I gently and lovingly said, you know, if you want to share, this is a safe place. You know what it turned out to be? Her twin brother had told a lie on her to her parents when they were teenagers. And she was in, at that time, was in her late 30s, so it had to be at least 15 years that she was carrying this, this burden of unforgiveness. She said, you have your tree, don't know him not, him never only tell the lie, you know. Him write it in a letter, and with tears streaming down her face, she delved into the depths of her handbag and produced a yellow creased exercise book. You remember exercise book? Exercise book leaf on which her twin brother, picnic sentin, you know, had written an untruth about her. She said, see it ya, see it ya. Till, till this day I have it. I said, no, darling, till this day it have you. <laughs> For you have carried that burden. So we're going to clean it up today if you're ready. To make matters worse, the brother had passed on to fresh fields and pastures new. In his father's green pastures, he was not on this plane of activity any longer. But fortunately, her soul so yearned for the healing. And she was open enough to this that she followed my advice. And we, we went out of, the, out of the hotel training room where we were out onto the terrace in the open air. And we put this piece of exercise book leaf with maybe five lines on it in an ashtray and we lit it. And as the smoke made its way up into the sky, the lines on her face visibly disappeared. I lie not to you. At the end of it, she looked a good 10 years younger. That is the power of forgiveness, my friends. And for the first time, she shared next day she went home and was able to speak civilly to the rest of her family. She said, I had a healing today. And I said, you went to revival? She said, no, I went to John Scott. <laughs> she didn't come to me. She came to the spirit of love that is in all of us and that is beckoning to us to forgive ourselves. Forgive us our trespasses. My God. As what? As we forgive those who have offended us. We say it every day, no, but we don't think about the, about, about the impact of it. The forgiveness principle is the key to your oneness with God. Ernest Holmes expresses it this way in the Science of Mind textbook. He says, and I quote, a new light is coming into the world. We name Temple of Light, you know. A new light is coming into the world. We are on the borderline of a new experience. Can we say that together? We are on the borderline of a new experience. And I love this that Holmes says, I quote, the veil between spirit and matter is very thin. There's a very thin veil between the invisible, my friends, and this walk that we are doing. 
God is right here. God is imminent. God is right, closer than your breath, nearer than your hands and feet. That veil that separates us. You remember at the crucifixion, the story goes that at the hour that he gave up the spirit, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And that veil in the temple of old represented the partition between the common people and the holy of holies that held the Ark of the Covenant, which was supposed to be the repository and the dwelling place of Yahweh, Almighty God. And so the rending of that veil, that thin veil, it's this gossamer, gauzy, beautiful fabric that separated the holy of holies from us, represented the coming down of that wall that we have built between ourselves and God the good, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and omniactive force that has control of our lives. There is a power for good. It is this God we talk about it in this church. A power for good in the universe. And not only can you use it, but it can use you to do great things in 2022. And so... Home says a new science and a new religion and a new philosophy are rapidly being developed. Look in your email inboxes and go to where the Temple of Light has sent you the strategic plan 2030. A new light is coming into the world. A new philosophy a new science and a new religion is being developed. And we are doing it here at the Temple of Light. And you are going to be hearing in the coming weeks many, many different aspects of this strategic plan that is just there for you. There is something there for everyone in this community to get involved and to share so that you can help to build a new tomorrow that is worthy of this world that we all love and this life that we wish to live to the honor and glory of God. And so Holmes says, this is in line with the great presence and nothing can hinder its progress. The truth will out, he says. The spirit will make itself known Happy are we if we see these things, these things, which from the foundation of the human race have been longed for by all aspiring minds. From the very beginning of time, human beings have longed for this closer association with God. And if you have that yearning in your soul this morning, I want you to know you have come to the right place. Because this is what we are going to be doing, not just today, but tomorrow evening at our New Year's workshop and throughout the year as we work together, individually as well, because we have individual work to do, but also as a community to create something that takes this teaching far beyond the shores of Jamaica, across the globe, because the world needs the science of mind and spirit. And we are going to have to join hands and hearts and consciousnesses and souls and sweat and love and all of our energy and focus it like a laser beam at the goals we wish to achieve in our lives individually and as a spiritual community. My friends, I'd like to end with the words of wisdom from a Hopi Indian chief named White Eagle, who was speaking on the current situation. He wrote it, I think, in the middle of last year. His words on the situation in which the world finds itself at this time. Listen up with your hearts. This moment humanity is experiencing 
can be seen as a door or a hole. The decision to fall in the hole or walk through the door is up to you. If you consume the news 24 hours a day with negative energy, constantly nervous with pessimism, you will fall into the hole. this hole. But if you take the opportunity to look at yourself, to rethink life and death, to take care of yourself and others, then you will walk through the portal. Take care of your home. Take care of your body. Connect with your spiritual home. And when you take care of yourself, you take care of everyone at the same time. Do not underestimate the spiritual dimension of this crisis. Take the perspective of an eagle that sees everything from above with a broader view. There is a social question in the crisis, but also a spiritual question for the two go hand in hand. Without the social dimension, we fall into fanaticism. Without the spiritual dimension, we fall into pessimism and futility. Are you ready to face the crisis? Grab your toolbox and use all the tools at your disposal. Learn resistance from the example of Indian and African peoples. We have been and are exterminated, but we never stopped singing, dancing, lighting a fire, and rejoicing. Don't feel guilty for feeling blessed in these troubled times. Being sad or angry doesn't help at all. Resistance is resistance through joy. You have the right to be strong and positive. There's no other way to do it than to maintain a beautiful, happy, bright posture. This has nothing to do with alienation, ignorance of the world. It's a resistance strategy. So our resistance strategy is joy. He, co he concludes, when we cross the threshold, we have a new worldview because we faced our fears and difficulties. So this is all you can do right now. Serenity in the storm. Keep calm and pray every day. Make a habit of meeting the sacred every day. Show resistance through joy, trust, and love. End of that quote from the Hopi Indian. And so my friends, let us start anew this morning, this moment, with a higher, fairer creed. Put your hand in the hand of faith and trust and walk with head held high into the dawn of this new year. Together, my friends, let us make all things new in 2022. Namaste. Wow. Amen. Amen. Let us. <laughs> Yes, our resistance strategy is the revelation of joy. Mm. And I just want to thank Reverend John for encouraging us to work on our relationship with God. He asked us to really spend some time today in reflecting on this relationship. You can journal on it. And in this reflection, Find out if there are anything that we need to release. If there are any areas of unforgiveness. And remember to forgive ourselves. And to be reconciled with ourselves and with our brothers 
and sisters in consciousness. And like Reverend John Hammack and I appeal to you, if you know anyone out there who is not yet familiar with our teaching, and a friend of yours who is seeking to walk through the door, ask them to join us. They can join us online if the sanctuary cannot hold. They can always join us online. To join us to work with our strategic plan to make Jamaica and the world a place that works for all.